Okay, this is my super smart phone, and I must say I do like it a lot. But it always seems to have a flat battery, uh, especially when I'm in a situation that's very difficult to recharge. For example, I'm switching planes at a hub airport, or I'm about to go into an all-day meeting in a conference room, and it's hard to get my uh, phone to be recharged. I, I was pondering that one day. I was uh, drinking some coffee, and uh, of course, the engineer recognizes that this is not simply coffee, but it's actually quite a bit of energy. Uh, this is a half a liter cup, uh, which would be a half a kilogram of coffee. And coffee, of course, essentially is water, and water is a really well-studied fluid in engineering, and of course there's tables on it, and there's a product called specific heat, and basically it's the amount of energy required to raise a gram of water by a one degree uh, Kelvin. But the specific heat of water is about 4.2 uh, joules per gram Kelvin in uh, room temperature, and uh, if you work out the math, that works out to about 168,000 uh, joules to take this water from, say, zero, 0 degrees centigrade to about 80 degrees centigrade. Um, and that's a fair bit of energy, actually, because when we look at this battery here, uh, it's rated in watt-hours, and you have to convert watt-hours into the uh, metric unit of joules, um, which is the unit of energy. And uh, it's about 22,500 joules. So this coffee uh, required about eight times the energy required to heat it up then this battery needs uh, to be fully charged. So, uh, this is kind of interesting. Can one transfer the energy from coffee uh, and convert it back to electricity uh, at least sufficiently to significantly recharge this battery? So, let's go find out. Okay, well first things first, uh, to study this sort of uh, phenomena, uh, well, obviously one's not going to carry this around, but uh, it's a good little jig to understand whether or not uh, you can get reasonable amounts of uh, energy transfer. It, it's obviously a little container uh, and it's got a, a side wall that's made out of metal and I built a matching container with the same construction and I've just simply placed uh, two Peltier junctions uh, onto these uh, metal plates and these of course convert to heat to uh, electricity and this grey material is a, a thermal interface uh, basically a gasketing and uh, it's designed that they'll uh, make quite flush and then of course I use the foam to uh, try to keep the, uh, the heat in and I'll put some uh, coffee onto the hot side and I'll put some cold water onto the other side. In fact, I'll use ice water. Uh, both fluids, of course, you can easily get uh, sort of anywhere. There's a cafeteria. Okay, well, real straightforward setup. Uh, two chambers here. I filled one with ice water. I'm going to pour some coffee in the back one here. This is just monitoring the voltage out of the Peltier junctions. I have two in series. Little. Um, boost regulator here which converts uh, the voltage coming from the Peltier's into 5 volts which is what the phone requires to charge and uh, no surprise uh, wakes up uh, starts to charge of course and that's the nature of a Peltier junction the real question of course here is uh, can one arrange these junctions in a way that you can actually get sufficient heat out of them and uh, obviously I don't think you'd be carrying this around, that would look a little silly. Uh, so that's sort of the next thing, how much energy actually is being produced by these junctions and uh, how much meaningful energy can you extract from the coffee and, uh, well, cold water. Okay, a lot going on in this picture here, let me uh, walk through it. The chambers here, I've got the temperature of the hot side being measured here, the temperature of the cold side being measured here. i got a time clock in the back so I can uh, do these long time measurements. Uh, the Coffee, well, no, it's just hot water, but the hot well, hot side is about 60 degrees centigrade right now, and the cold side, uh, hopefully a little better than uh, is it, uh, 20. Yeah. It's ice water, so it's uh, about 5 above, it looks like. This is the voltage coming out of the Peltier junctions. Uh, this is the voltage coming out of the boost regulator, 5 volts, that's good. Uh, here's the current being supplied, 10 milliamps, and that's just because that's what I've used here for a potentiometer. Okay, well, I'll insert a little video here. I took a photograph every 30 seconds so I could read the meters at the end of the experiment. Uh, it ran for uh, hours, uh, so it's surprisingly a long time that you're actually able to extract meaningful amounts of power out of the system. Um, and the little hand calculation says I'm around 4,000 joules of energy extracted from uh, the system. Uh, yeah, that's meaningful, that's usable. Um, and definitely, clearly some optimizations you can do right off the bat. Um, my uh, tank leaks, I guess I'm not the best of tank makers. Um, I think I lost about... That's about 25% of the hot water, so clearly an optimization you could do there. And obviously some condensation in the front. Um, but basically, yeah, it's extracting meaningful amounts of uh, energy. Uh, obviously, if you continue, that construction wouldn't work. But, uh, for example, like a thermos, which uh, you could cut in half and uh, fill one side with hot water, one side with cold. Uh, 
put some peltries in the middle, yeah, you could probably create a, a usable system to extract uh, meaningful energy out of uh, hot coffee.